Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and on this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about this Hisense U8H. Now, this TV is not perfect, but if you consider the price point, it has not only the great performance that you expect from a television, but it's packed full of features as well. So in this video, we're gonna do an audio test, picture test, you name it, we're gonna cover it on this video. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. First of all, this is powered by Google operating system, and this allows you to connect it to your Google account and use voice commands, as well as controlling devices in your home. On the side, you're gonna find some settings. You also have a screen saver. You have some inputs, and you do have some picture options. And I want to let you guys know that this TV also supports your Amazon services as well. You just go in here and go through the setup process and connect it to your account and then you can use it for those voice commands as well. Now one thing to point out on Google TVs in general is that whenever you hook up a device, you need to go in and select the different device that you're gonna choose and switch it over to enhanced mode if you wanna get 4K performance. The TV has this nice little thin bezel that goes from the edge all the way down to the side of it. And on the bottom, you're gonna find this foot that looks like the TV is floating and it has some wire maintenance on the back. At the bottom of the TV, you're gonna find your Hisense logo, and below that, there's a series of lights and some microphones built in, so you can use the OK Google command, but if you mute the microphone, the lights will stay on. Now, this is a 120 hertz panel, has a motion rate of 480, so it's gonna smooth out those movies and sporting events, plus it's available in a 55 inch, a 65 inch that I'm showing you guys today, and a 75 inch. Now here's a look of the back of the UHH and you can see that it does have screw holes so you can mount it on the wall. Plus, there's a subwoofer on the back to give you maximum bass response. You're also gonna find two USBs, a service port, two 60 hertz HDMI inputs, and two 120 hertz HDMI inputs, an ATSC 3.0 tuner for the next gen 4K over the air content. In addition to that, there's a ethernet input for connecting direct to your router, and a fiber optic output. Now let's jump into the picture quality. This TV is certified with IMAX and you get the experience with the picture quality plus DTS sound. And I also find it very comforting that this TV will support all the other formats like HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, which Samsung uses, as well as some adaptive technology where it automatically detects the signal and it cleans it up automatically. And I was very impressed with the contrast test on this television. Here's a couple of demos that you can look at. And you can see that the black levels all the way up to the grayscale is pretty decent. And it has over 500 local dimming zones and this helps clean up the picture in different parts of the television. So no matter where you look at it, it's gonna have inky blacks. And you can see where it cleans up the signal very well and you can go into the settings and adjust everything out so you get the smoothest picture possible. From time to time, people tell me in the comment section that when they look at HDR content, it's too dark. And the reason is, budget televisions generally have a nits rating around 400. Now, the reason this is important is because whenever you watch HDR, the signal takes control over the television, so you can't really adjust it that much more. So the higher your nits rating is, is the better and the brighter the TV's gonna look. And this one has 1,500 nits versus four or 500. Now looking at these examples, you can see the difference between HDR and SDR content. The Hisense can really bring out all those rich colors, the brightness, the detail, everything is very vivid. And you're gonna be very happy, especially watching those movies that's recorded in a very dark atmosphere like Batman or anything that Marvel has to put out. Now you guys are probably wondering about blooming. I'll tell you that this TV and every TV on the market itself for OLED has blooming, but it all depends on the brightness that you wanna use. And here's an example of the standard mode just playing, and let's switch it over to another setting. And this is what it looks like on vivid mode. See, some of the blooming comes back, but it's extremely bright. So that's the trade-off of having the signal to look a lot cleaner. And this is really where you get the best performance out of the local dimming zones. As you can see, I'm turning it off and on. The local dimming zone's really helping it out. Let's take a look at a viewing angle using my cell phone. As we cover to the side here, it seems like about right there is gonna be the sweet spot. If I go farther over, you see it completely washes out. We go back over here to the center. That's gonna be your sweet spot, of course, on VA panels. And then I'll go over to the other side. And again, if you have a chair over to the side, you're gonna definitely notice some uh, loss in the colors. Now, when it comes to glare, you can see that you can see the glare of this light. 
in the screen right there, you can see my cell phone. So I don't think it has much anti uh, glare coating on it, but most TVs don't unless you get into a really, really expensive range, two or $3,000. So uh, you will get some reflection on it if you put it in a well-lit room, just so you guys know. A lot of people don't notice about Hisense, but at the top, you do have your settings button, but there's a hidden menu. If you press on this one right here, you get this sidebar. And inside of this secret menu, you have your picture settings. You also can change the aspect ratio on certain programming. You have your sound, audio output, and then you have these two features right here. Now, the HDMI format is so you can move from your standard over to 4K and that's why I already done. And then we have your gaming zone because we're about to talk about some gaming. Go into the game zone settings, you can change your black levels, white levels, enhanced motion, free sync, and auto low latency. Now with the TV setup in gaming zone, let's see how fast our input lag is. And keep in mind, this is a 60 Hertz uh, input lag tester, not 120 Hertz, but we're getting about 14.6 milliseconds, which is pretty uh, good because most TVs that goes below 30 is doing a decent job. Now I'm gonna tell you, I played some games with this television and the biggest things that stands out to me is that it's smooth and it has a lot of saturation and that makes games really pop. Now I did try it out on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, and if you have something like a gaming PC that has like the 3080 video card which has HDMI 2.1, plug it into this TV if you happen to buy one, and leave a comment below. I'd like to know how this performs on PC as well as the different gaming consoles. Now I'm gonna pull up the Xbox so we can take a look at all the resolutions that you can do, but I will tell you again on the PS5, 4K, no problem, 120 hertz, no problem, and it does support that VRR, no problem. All right guys, let's dive into the Xbox real quick, and if you see here, it does support 120 hertz, no problem. Now if you see some lines right here, I can see it on my camera now, it's not that the TV is displaying this, it's just the incompatibility using a 60 frames camera with 120 hertz television, so you won't see this if you buy one. Now if we go into the details, Look at this, it supports everything the Xbox can do. It's a checkbox beside everything. 60 hertz, 120 hertz. It also has HDR gaming, Dolby Vision, and it supports all these different uh, movie watching and capturing events. If you go over here to the video modes, you can see that it supports the low latency, the variable refresh rate. This TV is loaded, it's loaded. So a lot of you guys wanna see this TV connect to a computer. So I have an HDMI cable plugged into the TV. And then if we go over to the TV, you can see that I was able to get 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. It will support SDR and HDR content just by going into the display settings and getting everything set up. Now this computer does have the Intel Iris XE graphic card in it, so it is capable of running multiple 4K monitors, but that's what you're gonna get when it comes to computers. Now I did test some different graphics, like this is Microsoft Edge, and if you come down here to the bottom, pull it up a PowerPoint, and with everything on the screen, it actually looks really clear and vivid. Now I will tell you that the dots are not as refined because this particular TV does not have a PC mode, but it is bearable to look at, especially if you're gonna stand a few feet away. Also, I went over here and loaded up Xbox, so you can uh, see that you can use this to get through some of your games and download it and use this TV for all kinds of different applications. Now, as I told you guys earlier, this TV has a great audio system. So if you click on sounds inside of the menu, you have your sound modes where you can choose from standard, theater, everything in between, including a compressed late night. You have your Adobe Atmos that you can turn off and on. You can turn off the subwoofer off and on, plus you have a bass boost. Down here, you have a wall mount setup and you have advanced settings and under here, we can do things like the balance, the volume, auto volume control, and that's great for those commercials and lip sync in case your audio is not syncing up with your uh, content that you're watching. Plus, there's an EQ in here where you can go from all these different frequencies from 120 hertz down to 10 kilohertz. But what does it sound like? Let's take a listen.
Now, there's the last few things I want to show you guys. First of all, if you're going to watch any type of IMAX movie, make sure you pull up something like Disney Plus, and you can see over there it says Enhanced IMAX. You can play it, but the trick is, is go over here to Versions, and there's the IMAX version right there. And the biggest difference you'll notice is on widescreen movies, you're gonna have these black bars on the top and bottom where IMAX has a different aspect ratio. So in some scenes, it will fill up the screen completely, which is great for a widescreen television. Now, because of copyright reasons, I can't actually show you this footage, but I will tell you, if you go back to the menu with the TV and HDR, all of a sudden you have these different profiles. So now you have Dolby Vision IQ, and this is what it looks like. And then we can go back to Dolby Vision Dark. And then we also have Dolby Vision Custom. And if you plan Xbox, you have Dolby Vision Games at the bottom. Now, as I was saying earlier, this TV is powered by Google TV. So you have all these different settings like live. If you have YouTube TV, you have movie settings, shows and applications. Now let's check out a web browser, see if we can find out how fast this TV is. And this one uses Wi-Fi 6, so it should be pretty fast in comparison to some other TVs. Now here's a speed test for you guys. Now I have 500 megabits per second up and down. Right now in this particular app, this TV is registering 289 down and 40 up. So it's gonna be good enough to run 4K content for streaming. Another thing I'll show you guys is that this TV does have a built-in web browser. And if you don't plug in a keyboard or mouse, you still can use the remote control. You also have the options where you can use the Google Voice commands or you can type in websites right here. Now I haven't tested this on websites that has movies, but I do know it will play HTML5 files. Now a lot of people do ask me about the built-in storage. You can see this TV does have 6.5 gigs. Most of them have been taken up by the applications that are built in, but I haven't put anything else in this TV, so I have available four gigs. Now when it comes to RAM, it doesn't state anywhere, so I have no idea what kind of RAM it has in it. And just so you guys know, it does also have an ambient mode. So if you have Google Photos, you can connect this to the account just like you could with any of the home devices. And if you go down here, you have an energy saving mode that you can have it to automatically turn on the last item used or your Google screen. And if we go back here, you can cast your phone over to it, and that's using applications like YouTube. And just so you guys know, you can use this built-in application from Hisense that allows you to share your screen. So if you want to do directly from the TV from your device, you can do that. And keep in mind, this is only supported by Windows 10 and Android, not iOS devices. And I did pull up my iPhone, and I don't see any kind of AirPlay options, just so you guys know. Now, this might be coming in the future, but from what I can see, this TV doesn't have a guide. In fact, it just shows you all the channels that are available. You can go ahead and hit the three lines on the remote to favor something, and if you go to the side, you can look at your antenna view, as well as the history, and you can edit. So over here, if you have a cable, you can go and switch over, but that's the only option that I've seen in this TV as far as uh, any kind of guide as far as over the air. And the last thing I'll show you guys is the remote control. So at the top here, you have different profiles you can set up for anyone using the Google TV account. You also have your Google voice commands right there, your settings. One thing I like is that it has the white background, so it's easy to see in the dark. And that's the navigation button as well. You have your back button, a direct TV button, volume, channel up and down, and that's that menu button that I showed you guys earlier. Plus you have your play pause and some hotkeys at the bottom, including Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube, Disney Plus, Tubi, and Peacock. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this television. And I think there's more pros and cons, but some things that I'm gonna be nitpicky about is that not having it as adjustable feet, I have a large sound bar, so it would not fit underneath here, so I had to put it in front of the TV, and at that point, it's gonna block part of the screen. So make that those feet adjustable on the next model. The second thing is it has two HDMI 2.1s, but one has been used up by eARC, and I've been saying this all along. I have an Xbox and a PlayStation. They both can do 120 hertz for gaming. If I plug both of these in here, I cannot hook up my eARC soundbar, so that eliminates that all together and I have to use the built-in speakers, so, you know, give or take. Another thing is I'm not finding Apple AirPlay, and there's a lot of iPhone users, so this TV should have Apple AirPlay. Now, you can use an Apple TV and then plug it in, but then you bypass the Google, so you can get into all that. Now let's talk about the positive things that this TV has to offer. 120 hertz, 1500 nits, color, fantastic. You have those Dolby Vision modes. It also has the IMAX features, so if you're gonna pull up Disney Plus, it's gonna look really good on that type of content. 
Also, I like the fact that this remote control is very easy to use, but the biggest thing that you're gonna get buying a TV like this is value and picture quality. Value and picture quality. So if you're looking for something that's not $2,000, $3,000 for a 65 inch like this, this is one to consider. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.